welcome to the 199th episode of the Jamie Delaney Plant-Based Wellness Podcast. My name is Jamie Delaney and I'm your host. I'm a plant-based cardiologist and endurance athlete living in Southwest Florida. Welcome and thanks for listening. Actually, I'm not in Southwest Florida right now. I'm actually in Atlanta because um, I was scheduled to run the Thrill in the Hills 50K this weekend. I've been updating people that uh, listen to the podcast regularly. Uh, If you can tell, my voice is not quite uh, what it usually is. It's never operatic, but um, it's usually better than it is. But I have come down with the flu, so I am a no-show or a do-not-start for the Thrill in the Hells 50K. Um, We've had a... And sorry, I guess we haven't had a podcast last week either. We've had a little bit of a rough couple of weeks in the plant strong Delaney Minorage community. Uh, Addie lost her German shepherd, Kimba, suddenly to what was probably an angiosarcoma. Um, Kimba was only eight years old and she became suddenly weak and um, ultimately uh, the vet found that she was bleeding into her belly, um, probably because this tumor had rupture and Addie had to, um, uh, you know, have her euthanized uh, right there because uh, she was suffering greatly. And so it was very traumatic. Uh, Addie's husband, Nathan Minerich, just took a job at uh, Houston, at the University of Houston football team. So he's already there. So she was alone. So Nathan and I flew up to be with Addie uh, in her time of need. Um, Kimba was a part of all our families, uh, just such a great dog. Um, Addie had, uh, she'd been through so many things, you know, best buddies uh, over the years. So that was, that was really difficult for us to to get through. Um, We have uh, been adopting German Shepherds for some time now. We actually uh, have three German Shepherd rescues, and they've all been wonderful, wonderful dogs. And, uh, you know, we decided a long time ago that these dogs are so loyal. And a lot of times people get the dogs, and, uh, you know, they're puppies, and they're really cute. And they, for some reason, I don't know if they've never seen a picture of a German Shepherd, but you know, when these dogs get big and they're energetic because they're working dogs, then people don't want them or they have them in an environment or, you know, um, people have to take dogs to school. It's not so much obedience training for the dog. It's like Caesar uh, Malone says, it's actually training the human. And uh, so if the human's not trained on how to handle a, a German shepherd and, and their personality and they don't have a, the German shepherd doesn't have a job, then oftentimes it leads to a bad outcome and they turn these dogs in prematurely and, you know, the dogs are abused and there's a thing going on in Atlanta here right now with 165 German Shepherds being found and, you know, that were being treated in a mill. So anyway, we uh, had decided a long time ago that we want to adopt uh, German Shepherds um, just because, um, you know, we want to give these dogs a chance and they are such loyal, loving dogs. Um, and that's just what we do. Um, we've had a lot of them have health issues that um, actually have died. Of, another dog had died of an angiosarcoma, and another dog had a tumor. And, you know, people say that these dogs, you know, are overbred, and that's why they get tumors, and, uh, you know, they're looking for cures of the cancer, but it's really frustrating to me, especially as a plant-based doctor, that, you know, we haven't looked to why do, how do we prevent uh, cancer in these dogs. Um, Kimba uh, was vegan for several years. Uh, she wasn't vegan all of her life, um, you know, and I think that Addie and I are going to uh, be looking into research on how we can help these dogs. You know, if I talk to, about people, we don't have to turn on these bad genes in people, then why do we have to turn on these genes in dogs? And obviously their lives are shorter than ours, so things get accelerated, but I think there's a lot of work needs to be done on how we can make these dogs' lives better by what they're exposed to and how we treat them. Um, you know, certainly there's an issue with maybe over vaccination and maybe some heartworm and maybe the food, uh, maybe pesticides that they're exposed to along with their DNA. So, you know, that, that's something that I have um, kind of decided is going to be a mission of mine uh, in the future. But I, I think for our dogs where, you know, we, we give them V-Dog um, as their nutrition and um, you know, we add vegetables to their, their kibble and everything, but I, I think, you know, we're, we're going to make a more concentrated effort to see if we can't increase the antioxidants in this dog's food and, and do a little bit more research. And, you know, not to advertise anything, um, you know, in this 
segment uh, because of that, but Eric O'Gray is going to be coming down for our conference. Uh, he has the book Walking with Petey, and he um, has been very involved with the Humane Society and vegan dog, um, and, and feeding dogs vegan, and so it'll be nice to um, discuss what he knows about um, plant-based nutrition for dogs and to see if we can't get something going and a little bit more research headed towards trying to prevent cancer in these dogs because it's just not fair for such loyal dogs to be just brushed off. It's just That's just one of the dogs that gets cancer and you can't do anything about it. And, you know, I, I, Addie and I'll continue to adopt these dogs uh, and give them a, a good life no matter, um, you know, how, how short it might be. And hopefully maybe we can, you know, help make things better. But if you are considering, um, you know, getting a, a companion animal and you would consider getting a German Shepherd, uh, just make sure you know that you need to train yourself and the dog in classes that you get to know each other. Um, you'll, you'll develop a bond that you never thought was possible. Uh, but they do need exercise, and they do need uh, attention, and they need a job. Um, you know, my Samantha, we run every morning, and she likes to play Frisbee, and uh, she goes to work with me, and she has her routine, it, just like uh, people have the routine. Um, so make sure that if you're going to do that uh, or consider getting a dog, uh, consider rescuing uh, because there's so many great animals out there, and uh, give them the attention that, that they need. You just can't put an iPad in front of a dog and Hope that they'll be entertained. Um, so, leading up to what's happened to me and my did not do not start here in uh, the uh, thrill in the hills. Um, you know, I spent the weekend last weekend in Atlanta. Then I came home and I went to Fort Lauderdale for a talk that I gave at uh, Food for Health Foundation, which is a very interesting venue at the Yellow. It's Y E L L O Creative Arts and Events Center in Fort Lauderdale. It's founded by M Marissa Hormel. And she actually sponsors 10, um, uh, 10 uh, eCornell um, certificate classes to applicants each year. So if you're in that area and you'd like to take the eColin Campbell eCornell plant-based nutrition course, um, that's a way to get a scholarship. Uh, it's a great, uh, great place. Uh, Marissa is doing great work. Uh, the arts uh, studio that she's um, set up there with dance on one side, and they have lectures uh, about health each uh, week there. Um, they've also opened a vegan cafe that was fabulous. They fed us a nice kale salad before we left. Uh, really enjoyed it. They have a vegan chef that's uh, sugar, alt, oil, salt-free. So, um, you know, if you're in that area, stop by and see them. But by the time I got back uh, from Fort Lauderdale giving that lecture, it's about a three-hour drive each way. I started feeling bad. Next thing I knew, I had fevers and chills, and uh, you know, diagnosing myself uh, pretty much, I, I, I got the flu. And uh, you know, I started doing what I tell my patients to do when they get illnesses like this. I started the tonics with lemon, uh, lemon peel, and ginger, and turmeric, and orange, and banana. Uh, and I start drinking those and salt water, gargles, and all this thing, trying to head it off. But um, I think I was a bit too run down, uh, and it got ahead of me. And so uh, with recurrent days of temperatures in the 101, um, you know, finally had to reluctantly pull the plug on starting the 50K. Uh, I thought about it. I thought about uh, continuing to do the race um, up until the night before, um, but uh, just kind of doing some little things like getting ready, um, I was exhausted. So the idea of making it, um, you know, even five miles on the race was, was um, going to be a big stretch. So I decided to pull the plug, especially since I have some races at the end of the March uh, or mid-March, uh, Asheville half marathon and marathon. So better to pull out now and be able to kind of get myself back in gear to run these other races. But, uh, you know, uh, Oftentimes, we, we want to keep going when we have these, especially if you're a runner and you, you run every day. I, I've, been, I've been on a running streak um, for uh, well over 50 days, and you, you kind of get so that you, you don't want to stop. I think um, I missed Christmas Day, and then I missed last Friday when I missed, uh, went to Atlanta, and then, of course, uh, on the way up here, I pulled the plug and haven't ran for the last couple of days, um, but it's, it's something that you don't want to, you don't want to stop, but... I had to remind myself that, you know, I worked the med tent at Ironman Florida a couple years ago, and I saw these people in the med tent that basically had some sort of cold or virus or flu-like illness, and they went ahead and started the race. 
and then they ended up in a med tent, and um, especially with an ultra, um, it's not like there's an easy way off the course when you're out in the middle of nowhere, um, and it's not fair to the race personnel to have to drag you off for doing something stupid, so um, better left to, to not start. Um, the other thing that you know, with a flu-like illness is, you know, if you have, if you start to look up, can I run with a cold? Can I run with the flu? Or after the flu, uh, cold is one thing, uh, or if you haven't had a fever. But if you've had a fever, uh, you get a lot more dehydrated than you, than you really even think that you are, uh, even if you're pushing the fluids. And, and your body's burning um, calories and burning nutrients so fast that you really can't keep up, and your appetite's not good enough to really get in the nutrients. So, you know, I, I wasn't eating near what I normally eat uh, in the in the last 48 hours. Um, you know, I did get in my, you know, the blenders full of fruit and ginger and all that kind of stuff, and I got in some miso soup, but it, it was really hard to get in any, any significant amount of calories. So um, certainly between that, just being a little dehydrated from the fevers and, and not getting any calories, I don't have much in the way of muscle strength. The other thing you have to worry about um, if you try to go out too soon after a fever um, is a thing called rhabdomyolysis, uh, and that's a breakdown of your muscle cells because when you have a fever, a temperature over 101 and a half, um, you, you're ac actually, um, you know, have a bloodstream infection of sorts, whether it's a viral load or, you know, this, this was a viral load, obviously influenza is a virus, uh, or, you know, the risk is a bacterial infection. But um, you, you've got a lot of muscle cell breakdown already. Um, that's why you get the muscle aches and skin being sore and everything. So if I were to go out and try to run, uh, especially 50K, uh, it could result in a lot of muscle breakdown and that would muscle tissue breakdown, which can result in kidney failure. So that's probably a reason not to go. Uh, and then there's always a little bit of a risk of a cardiomyopathy. And that's really poor form for a cardiologist to get a cardiomyopathy because they were stubborn, she was stubborn. So anyway, I uh, pulled the plug on the, the, uh, um, the 50K uh, for this time, so hopefully we'll get training. Probably going to come up or somebody might be saying, did, did you get the flu shot? And uh, no, I, I didn't get the flu shot. Um, I haven't had the flu shot for several years. Um, I haven't had the flu since, I think, 1998. Um, I consider myself um, with a pretty good immunity. Um, but I do also have a pretty high exposure and, um, you know, it led me to wonder myself whether maybe I, I should have got the flu shot, uh, because of my high exposure. Um, but I, I really think that, um, you know, flu shot is probably about 30 to 40% effective and it's not as effective this year. So would the flu shot have prevented me from this particular virus? I don't know. Um, it's hindsight's 2020. Um, will I get the flu shot in the, in the future? I don't know. Uh, perhaps, I guess, maybe if I have races coming up during flu season, maybe I will. I don't know. Uh, I don't like the idea of the uh, eggs, and I don't like the idea of the aluminum in, in the, over the years to accumulate in these uh, vaccines that um, aren't particularly effective. But, um, you know, I think that if you... My advice to other people would be if you are at high risk or your immunity is such that you can't fight something off, then you probably should um, do everything possible not to get it uh, in, as well as the, the pneumococcal vaccine as well. Um, you know, I do think um, I've recovered from this pretty quick. Um, you know, I mean, I have had uh, three days of fever and, um, you know, it's, it's finally breaking. I think if I... Uh, didn't eat what I ate uh, and, and, you know, and have the plant strong nutrition, it would be a lot worse. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, it is a little bit nasty. So there you have it. Um, so I guess uh, sometimes doctors need to take, take their own advice. So anyway, um, Addie uh, Delaney Meinrich and Michael Hubbard are out there running the Thrill in the Hills, and I'm going to tune in. I, I was able to get Addie on the phone a little bit uh, to see um, how she was doing, so we'll, we'll pull that in and um, see, see how, how she's going here a little bit. So let's see if I can find Addie. Hey. Good. Good. <laughs> All right, we're tuning in with Addie Delaney Minerich at the Thrill of the Hills, 50K, north of Atlanta. How you doing? Hey, 
Doing pretty good. Uh, we have two 13.1 laps and then a five mile loop. I'm done with my first 13 lap. I actually just crossed over mile 14 about 30 minutes ago. So, so far so good. Yeah. Uh, what was it like there when you when you got there? Since uh, I'm on the DL, as as I've uh, talked about earlier with people, so um, it's at a park. What is the name of the park? At Fort Yargo State Park, um, northeast of Atlanta, from out towards Athens. So, um, luckily, my training around Atlanta gives me a lot of hills. So the hills here have not been as bad, um, but the uh, rolling hills. Nice trail, though, really well marked. Everyone's been great. It's been a lot of fun. Definitely a little muddy because of the running we've been having, but that just makes it a little more fun. Yeah, no slip and falls yet? No, no, not like that one time. I gracefully or ungracefully, however you want to look at it, caught myself. But other than that, knock on wood, no face plants in the mud yet. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds good. And uh, it was raining at the start, but now what's the weather like? Um, actually, it stopped raining right when they got started us off. So I took my raincoat off immediately and threw it in my pack. And it's actually, we have some sunshine. Nice, nice. Yeah. And, um, and it's thinned out because yeah. there's a 50K and a relay and a 21K and a five mile, right? Yes. Yeah, we started out first, seven thirty. Have you seen some fast people? Oh. Hmm. Have you seen some fast people? Ah, uh, definitely. Definitely seen some fast ones. Definitely had the twenty-one k. A few of those people passed me, but that's okay. I think the biggest thing about this race, I think running, can teach us all a little bit of something and. What I'm trying to do today is stay in my own head, stay in my own race, and try to do the best that I can do today and enjoy every step and the ability to get out of the city a little bit, unplug, and just run my little plant strong legs to the finish line. There you go. There you go. That sounds good. Yeah. All right. Well, we wish you the best and uh, glad you're, you're knocking, it, knocking it home. So we'll be uh, anxious to give an update on just how great you do. Perfect. I'll be checking in with y'all later. All right. Sounds good. Take care. All right. Run strong. Thanks. See ya. All right. Bye. <laughs> well, that was a nice little check-in. Um, so I hope she'll, she'll do well. Uh, it's her first 50K. Uh, she is, seems to be knocking out of the park. Sounds pretty good for uh, being halfway home. So that'll be great. Uh, next up for me um, uh, this week, uh, I have a couple talks, but we're, we're headed to, Addie and I are both are headed to the Southwest Florida Veg Fest in Bonita Springs, uh, Florida at Riverside Park. Uh, so if you're in the area, stop down and uh, check. I'll be speaking. Uh, we'll also have a, a little tent there that um, highlights what we're doing. Um, if you want to hear, uh, see more about what's going on, it's vegansouthwestflorida.org. Uh, V-E-G-A-N-S-W-F-L dot org. I'll put it in the show notes. Um, the other thing that's happening, uh, March 30th, again, is our fourth annual Charlotte County Plant-Based Nutrition Conference. Uh, Eddie and I will be speaking along with Eric O'Gray and Alan Goldhammer. So, again, uh, get your tickets for that. Uh, they're going fast. Um, I also have a few consultations, um, appointments the day before, uh, Addie as well. Uh, if you're interested in coming in and, and having a private consultation with us, you can get tickets for that. You can get the tickets uh, by going to drdelaney.com, D-O-C-T-O-R-D-U-L-A-N-E-Y.com, and there's a link um, to eventbrite.com to get the tickets, uh, both for the conference and uh, the private consultations if you're interested. So we'd love to see you there. Uh, it's going to be a great day with uh, plant strong, sugar, salt, oil free breakfast and lunch, as well as lectures, cooking demos, question and answer session, and just a, a small environment where you get to ask your questions. It's um, a very positive environment, so I look forward to uh, seeing you all uh, there. It'd be great uh, to have you come and visit. 
Uh, again, you know, next up is for me is the Asheville Half Marathon and, and Whole Marathon in the middle of March. I think it's March 15th, 16th, so I'm hoping to get myself back in gear for that. Um, you know, uh, as far as this tonic goes, what I'm kind of treating myself with, you know, for uh, the flu, you know, what happens if you get the flu, um, I am doing these uh, repeated um, blender Vitamix fulls of, you know, lemon and uh, use the lemon peel. There's a lot of extra antioxidants in the lemon peel as well as, uh, you know, as many oranges as I can get down. I uh, put a few oranges in there, knob of ginger, knob of turmeric, uh, banana, you know, if it's not sweet enough where you can throw a date in there and water and uh, blend that up. And that, that's really, really good. The other thing I like is this miso soup where I'll do uh, garlic and onion uh, roast it in the miso broth, uh, as well as mushrooms and that uh, and a little tofu. So that's that's helpful, um, you know, to kind of keep the fluids going. So if you do have the flu or get one of these uh, cruds of the winter time, uh, make sure you keep hydrated uh, and get in as many antioxidants. You know, sometimes when we get sick, we want to just eat junk food, but that doesn't really help us get better uh, any quicker. So you know, I actually had kale several times, you know, big, you know, big bunches of kale, spinach, any kind of greens you can get in, um, any way that you can get them in, uh, you know, Eddie met me at the airport with the big smoothie, you know, green smoothie trying to get past it, but uh, I do think it helps you get better quicker and get your energy back, uh, so eat um, healthy food uh, with, you know, attention to, to getting your strength back if you, if you do get the, these, uh, one of these bugs. If you have any questions about the practice, uh, please email me at jamie, J-A-M-I, at drdelaney.com. Love to hear from you. And...